Tonight, are your TV viewing habits being watched? Find out. And this little box, it's like a TiVo, but for your radio. Plus, get your butt kicked in our LAN party, live from the Tech TV studios in San Francisco. It's the Screensavers! to the screen, Sam. Happy boy, Leo Laporte. Woo! I'm Patrick Norton. Woo! Thank you for joining us on the screen, Isn't Sam. that fun? You ever do that? Just go, Woo! Woo! Hi, hi, how you doing? Woo! Woo! This is the show where, <laughs> it's a little lull in them. Did you notice there was a little lull there? Just kind of everything, they, like all the air went right out of the whole thing. Woo! <laughs> this is the show, I don't know what's going on. Well, you're, can we start the show over? Sorry. This is the show where you're guaranteed to be entertained. Yes. yes. Well, or Whee! what passes for entertainment anyway. <laughs> and learn tech for at least an hour. Today, the whole point of the show today, today is to make you feel good and smart. You're starting to sound like Joe DiMaggio. Today, 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 today. today. I consider Lou Gehrig. I consider myself he's still learning about baseball. Let's see what Sarah's the up ball, to. The bat. She's got a report today, right? I have so much going on today, you have no idea. I'm first going to sabotage a news article online. Ooh. And then I'm going to track a woman on the run. Ooh. And then I'm going to find out my net worth. Wow. I know. All in one blog report. How does she do it? I don't know. How does she do I'm it? very busy. Dan Fufu Huard. How are the yeah. phones today, Dan? The you phones are. are great, but yeah. before I get to anything, I just wanted to say my mother called um, just yeah. yesterday, and she's yeah. worried about Dinty Moore. Yeah, because we keep talking about how you don't eat, you only eat canned food. Exactly. Canned exactly. stew, to be exact. Canned so, stew. Uh, needless to say, I went to the corner store, bought a salad. What? Yeah, I did. What? <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. Don't get all excited. Was it a macaroni salad? No, it was. Was a, it a three bean salad? It was a green salad. No! <laughs> wait, wait, you bought it, but did you eat it? Uh, I ate the whole thing and. In orange. Mrs. Hoard, he is taking care of himself. That pasty expression will be gone any day now. He'll be shaving twice a week. Twice soon. a week soon. All right, that's good food. But anyways, uh, to get a hold of us, it's 888-989-7879. 7879. Call. Now I'm sounding like Lou Gehrig. 888-999-888-99. Kevin, the mad dark tipper rose. Yes, the mad you tipper. You too. Uh, today, I really don't have a whole lot, but I did do one thing. I updated an article. We had an article last week that was about eMule, and I added a new link in there because everyone's saying, how do I find programs by their hash marks? Well, I put a nice little search in on, engine on there, go to the article, check it out, and a lot of people have been requesting now, that. You know, so. we talk about eDonkey. What's the difference between eMule and eDonkey? It's e the same network. It's, e network. Is, it's just another client to, it's for a, the eDonkey network. It's eDonkey e client, eMule. Yep. Okay, good. Got it. Hash marks. Yep. Soon to be followed by eJackass. You what? Nothing. Never mind. Now no. let's see what <laughs> Tech News got. His oh. and my eyes today. Uh, uh. In the Washington Post today, Federal Trade Commission has gone to Congress. Actually, they testified yesterday in front of Congress asking, I love this. I love this. Asking for broad. This is the one time when a government organization asks for broader powers that I'm all for it. Hunting privileges on spammers? That's exactly right. Broader powers to attack spam. They called on Congress to do a few things. First, to outlaw tactics used by spammers like uh, hiding the origin of the message, so you, mm -hmm. which almost all spammers do, so you can't get back to them. Uh, uh, using deceptive subject lines like, hi, how you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. Joe, the <laughs> email you've been waiting for. Yeah, and refusing to honor those unsubscribe requests, which really, frankly, most of the time are just... You might as well put a link there. Tell us, is this email real so we can sell it to somebody else? This is nice, but how are they going to actually, you know, act on this, defend it, make it happen? You know the name of the FTC commissioner who testified? I love his name. He's got the best name in government. Orson Swindle. Orson <laughs> Swindle, who is the commissioner of the SEC. And I'm not making that up. I couldn't make that up. Said that spam is about to kill the killer app of the internet, saying the industry isn't doing enough to empower users who want to spam free inbox, so government has to step in. Uh, they're talking about passing a bill. You know, Congress has never passed successfully any spam law. They're talking about getting a bill in there. Um, they're talking about giving them more sweeping administrative powers. 
this is one case where I think this is a good idea. He says, I'm not convinced the industry wants to empower consumers by giving them easy to use tools to control their email. He believes, as, as anybody who's got any sense believes, that spammers have one goal, one goal only, to fill your mailbox with junk. No, no, they, they want to make money. Oh, yeah, filling. that too. Nobody, there, I don't think there are any sort of art spammers out there. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we, are, we are artists of spam. Anyway, good luck with the FCC and, and Commissioner Swindle. <laughs> FTC. <laughs> FTC. Commissioner Swindle, you have our, you have our vote. This is, sounds like a name from Pogo or something. <laughs> I'm Commissioner Swindle, and I'm here to take care of spam. Well, we've met the enemy. Oh, and yes. he's, uh, see, in the grab bag of news department yesterday, Microsoft announced they were buying RAV antivirus from Romania's GCAD software. Today, IGG News reports that Linux support for the software, here's a shock, is going to be cut off and dropped. <laughs> Why should... You know, your spit take was a little weak. Let it was me a little weak because I wasn't again. surprised enough. Try that again. And in, in, in a shock, yeah. Linux support for the product would be dropped. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, but we didn't get it on camera. We'll, it's okay. We'll I can't do it again. <laughs> you want to try it one more no, time? No, well, right, on the next time. Line. Why should you care? I don't know. Why? Because <laughs> there's a strong chance the email you get comes through a Linux server. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going to get the camera on that someday that actually runs this software. You know, oh, we should have warned the audience. We just bring umbrellas, raincoats. Cause it's that's starting just to be like Gallagher. Jeez. <laughs> Hang uh. up your plastic sheet. Anyhow, Microsoft's reps promise that they acquire the tech for its quality and not to take any pot shops at the Linux Yeah, but why did they community. kill Linux? I don't understand. Well, you know, they didn't really answer that question. Yeah, no, we're not going to take pot shops, but meanwhile we're going to kill the Linux product. They're going to allow the, the, the founding company to finish off Rock. its service contracts. Good. Unfortunately, there are options. Just sad that they would buy it and tank it. It doesn't, su Linux doesn't surprise me, does it? Yeah. It doesn't surprise me. Not at all. all. Another good story. Today, finally, a little perkier news. IEEE has announced the standard has been finalized. In a press release from Piscataway, New Jersey, 802.11g has been ratified by the standards boards, which means if, <laughs> for all of the hundreds of thousands of you that have bought 802.11g yes. products, yes. it's time to go download the final drivers in the next few weeks. So you will be able to upgrade if you bought, for instance, an Apple Air, Air, Airport Extreme. Wow. You could probably upgrade to the Depending standard. on whether or not the company actually bothers Remember, to do it. This happened with modems. Remember where they yes. would just constantly change it and you just upgrade the firmware. Yeah. So keep an eye. Just go upgrade. The Question of the day. This is that. kind of wacky. Yeah. According to the BBC... You can't see the Matrix Reloaded in Egypt. They banned it. Yep, because they of its violent it. content and because it tackles, quote, religious themes. Really? Yes. Religious themes? Yeah. The blue pill, the red pill, religious uh, creation, themes? Creation, who's in control, is there a god, all that kind of stuff. Question of the day. The architect. If you were going to ban the Matrix, would you ban it for? Religious a. reasons. B. Not enough plot. There was a plot. C. Can Keanu Reeves acting skills. Or D. Whoa. Back off, man. The Matrix rules. Rules. Well, the Matrix did rule. It's the Matrix Reloaded. Reloaded. Let's I stop. liked it. You didn't like it. I liked it. It was li a little heavy on you the special what? effects. 30 minutes of editing, it would have been a reasonably like okay follow. Although, you got to ask. When he goes in there and there's like 8,000 Agent Smiths, yeah. and he beats them all up, beats them all up, finally just flies away. Why did he fly away to begin with? Or better yet, why did they use the CG from the video game that looked so fake? Yeah, I know. It was a little fakey. That was annoying. Go to the screensavers.com. Maybe that's why you should ban the movie. Bad, Bad CGs. CGs. Go to the screensaver. we got to clean out this monitor. I can't stick the news in there anymore. And cast your vote in the talkback section. <laughs> he just took it all out. Today's Thursday. You know what that means? It's LAN party, which yes. is powered by NVIDIA. Let's check with our TSS LAN party MC, Joshua Brentano. You know, guys, it's okay to not be elitist and just say, I liked The Matrix because it was a fun movie. I it liked wasn't a fun movie. Did you like it? It was Did too you like long. It? I liked it. I liked it, I too. Really yeah, liked I'm it. with you, Joshua. The Matrix was delay. great. The Matrix Reloaded had problems. I can't wait for revolutions. You, of all people, Mr. Hypercritical. Hypercritical. Oh, he's big into Never Star Wars. Let's talk that, about the that, that already, we know he has no taste. What uh, What are we playing today, Joshua? You guys are gonna die first. I'm gonna live longer. <laughs> today uh, we're playing Wolfenstein Enemy Territory, which it's is true. a free demo that Activision uh, has just released, and our Rackspace servers are fired up and ready to go. Those of you that registered this week, we're playing against Kevin Rose, our Dark Tipper, the one and only. Mine just froze. That, that's my screen right there. Yeah, that's his screen. Well, you know it's so not I'm, NVIDIA's fault. It must be the game. It must yeah, be the game. <laughs> yes. It can't be NVIDIA's fault. Couldn't be no. NVIDIA's fault. <laughs> and then that, sitting next to him is Heather. You don't see her much. She is one of the line producers that makes the show happen. Where is Heather? Oh, she's sitting in the, she's hi, hanging her hat. This is Heather's first time playing, so I'm she's getting is sick. She, is she a Nazi or an ally? Are you a Nazi, Nazi or an ally? I'm an American. 
I'm there you go. But I'm ally. having vertigo. And I just and that would be an ally. <laughs> an ally. I'm an American. And then down here on the end, of course, we have Yoshi. You know him from the screensavers. Big Y. And so if you think you can beat him, <laughs> give it a shot. Yeah. He's, the, he's an Egyptian. Yes. And yes. if you didn't register to play or you didn't get chosen today, we'll see you next week for another installment. Installment. So unfreeze Kevin Rose because we can't win without I Kevin. I know. Look at this. Yeah, it's a very team-oriented game, right? You can't. What? What? He's Come stuck. On, he's looking. You know what? I think it's, you're. It's I think you're in the ocean. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Okay. Oh, look he was that. in the ocean. I got the uh, task manager up here. Now that's a part of the game. Most people don't that's realize. That's right. People are killing tasks. There we go. This has been the most random opening to a show. I know. I love it. Don't you love it? Let me. Let me just. Let me just say hello and welcome one more person because we don't have enough people on the show. John on the line from Marionette, Wisconsin, home of the Thunderbirds. Many people don't know that. Hi, John. Hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Would mm. you like a spit take, John? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> thank you. What's what happened here? Yeah. It's locked. What's, uh, what, what can we do for you, John? Well, I'm building a new computer and yes. I'm looking for a case that incorporates a refrigerator so I can keep the Mountain Dew near when I play. <laughs> Now, I can, okay, let me tell you why it's a bad idea, and then you can tell them how to do it. Okay. Okay? So the problem with a, a PC is the heat, right? Because too much heat's bad for the chips, bad for the components. So you spend a lot of time on the PC doing cooling, right? right? Getting the heat out of the PC. So how does a refrigerator work? Well, it's a sealed, insulated box that takes all the heat out of the box and pumps it into the atmosphere, i.e. into your PC. So you would be putting a, a heater in effect in your PC. The only cool part of the refrigerator is the inside, unless you put the PC in the refrigerator. Right. What you want to do is you want to take the coils, and if you look at the back of a big refrigerator, right, or a college dorm refrigerator, on the back side of it is a bunch of coils where the cooling is done. Yes. What you need to do is figure out a way to get a refrigerator, a little tiny one, maybe like one of those really odd ones they sell at right. you know, the co bargain stores. The coils outside the box. Outside of the box. But hey, Yoshi, could you do something like that? Put a refrigerator. I hate to interrupt you in your in your war um, against the uh, allies. Yeah, you could. It wouldn't be a good idea. Condensation, like you oh, said. Oh, condensation, another issue. Yeah, but I mean, if, you if you want a refrigerated case, get a Promethea chip con case, and you can get down to negative forty. I have seen somewhere like Slash Star, some somebody did this. So but I've the whole thing a, was a refrigerator. I've seen one with a coffee pot in the front <laughs> of a PC. Do you think, John, we should we should challenge Yoshi to do this? Appliance I, PCs. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. Hey, can you put a, a vacuum cleaner in there while you're at it? And a dishwasher? <laughs> no. All right, just the refrigerator. Yoshi, do you take the challenge? You accept the challenge? Sure. Really? Sure. Why not? You got now. You see what the challenge is. You got to solve these heat issues. You got to put a, a, issues. A, How many? Well, how big's the refrigerator got to be, John? Well, like, you know, you got to have at least six cans. For a six a good pack. Game. <laughs> Man wants a six pack. That's gonna be a big PC, John. <laughs> That's okay. Room's not an issue. Right. I well, like this idea. I think we're gonna to do it. it. We're going to get one of those dorm fridges, mm -hmm. and you know, that's what you do. Right. You make the dorm fridge be the PC case, and then you just put all the parts inside the dorm fridge, and you put the six-pack next to the motherboard. You know, we joked about this at one point. <laughs> we never meant for it to happen. I want to do it. Uh, if Yoshi won't do it, I'm going to do it. We'll just get an old fridge. We poke some. I think we could do this. John, this yeah. is all your fault. I, it's going to be I fun. I aim to cause problems. <laughs> it's you okay. Did. It's going to be good. Is there really a town called Marionette in... Uh, Yes, there is. Wow. It's uh, 60 miles north of Green Bay. Cool. cool. Marionette, Wisconsin. Excellent suggestion. Super Marionation, Wisconsin. Right down the road. Many people don't know that. <laughs> Thank you for the call, John. Coming up a little later, TiVo did it for television. I'm going to show you what Pogo is doing for radio. This is so cool. Yeah. Leo's pick coming up. And after the break, is your TV watching you as much as you're watching it? You may be surprised. We'll get to the bottom of things when the screensavers rises like a phoenix from the ashes of these commercials. Stay right here. Welcome back to the Screensavers. Privacy and the freedom to do what we want with our tech. They're always, I think, one of the most important things we cover on this show and something we believe in firmly. Well, you know, recently it's your television that's taking part in both of these issues. Joining us now, uh, Fred Von Lohman. He's an attorney for the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF.org. And we're going to talk a little bit about your TV and it's how it's watching you. Welcome to Screensavers, Fred. Thanks Great for Great to have you on. I know you've been on uh, Silicon Spin and been on the channel yeah. before, but Great. we've never had you on this show and we're glad to. Well, I'm happy to be here. So... Normally, you think of watching TV as fairly passive. Nobody really can, unless you're like uh, you, you're doing ratings or something. Nobody's watching what you're watching, or are they? 
Well, traditionally, unless you were one of those Nielsen families right. that got paid to tell everyone exactly what you were watching, it was a one-way street. You watched right. television, television wasn't watching you. Right. Today, new technologies are changing some of that. Uh, if you have a TiVo, for example, every night your TiVo dials in to TiVo Central Command and reports back what you recorded, what you watched, information like that. Does TiVo admit this? Do they tell people what it's monitoring? Yes, they do. And in fact, uh, they're very careful about protecting privacy. When they gather that information, it's done in a way that you can't trace back to the individual. So they don't keep track of what I, Leo Laporte, am watching. They keep track of what all TiVo viewers are watching? That's right. So they can tell you at the end of a Tuesday night how many people watched Buffy, but they can't tell you whether a particular person was watching Buffy that evening. They don't, do they break it down by zip code? How, how can they? Uh... I think they can, although I'm not sure. They've just now started selling some of these reports to third parties. Oh, interesting. Uh, if you are a TiVo owner and you're concerned about this, right. you can opt out and have your TiVo not collect that information about you. How do you do that? You. I believe you can do it through their website, follow oh, the links to their privacy uh, section, right. and they'll explain to you how you can do it. The fun thing is you can also opt into having them collect more information about you. And why would you want, ever want to do that? Well, I personally have always dreamed of being a Nielsen family so myself. So it's kind of like that. Exactly. So you essentially can vote. You know, I know I would just watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer reruns all day long. Right. <laughs> but that's a possibility. Well, and we've talked about it before, you know, the TiVo uh, uh, suggestions, they, they obviously are kind of watching what you're watching and then make suggestions based on that. And often those suggestions are kind of hysterically wrong. For some reason, my TiVo has decided that I like Spanish language programming. I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> but on my TiVo, I've got a lot of great Spanish programming that someday I'll be able to understand. So I'm wondering, you know, maybe this technology is kind of imperfect anyway. Maybe they're making guesses about what I'm doing that aren't so accurate, right? Well, I'm sure the technology will evolve, right. but from a privacy point of view, the thing we're worried about is in the future, the next generation of TiVo devices, right. will they protect your privacy as much as TiVo does, especially if those devices are deployed by your cable company? Well, that's what I was going to say. Not all uh, digital video recorders are TiVos. There's replays, there's ultimate TVs, Dish has a PVR, and many cable companies have similar technologies. Are, uh, do they all have the same kind of policies right now? Well, I'm not sure, but this is certainly a worry. Today, you're the one who pays TiVo. You buy right, the box, right. you pay a subscription. So TiVo has a reason to keep you happy. They're, I'm their customer. You're the customer. You're voting with your dollars every right. month. The worry is if tomorrow you have a Dish Network or DirecTV or your cable company provides you a box, well, in that case, the technology vendor, their customer is your cable company. Right. And they're not beholden to you. They're beholden to your cable company or your satellite provider. And they might not be so worried about protecting your privacy. What kinds of things could they collect, and how would they use it? Well, today, using PVRs, it's possible to collect literally every button press on your remote. So they could keep track of what you watched, what you recorded, how long you kept the programs, when you fast-forwarded. Mm. Uh, uh, all of that information mm. can be recorded. After all, PVRs are essentially nothing but computers, right. uh, and they can keep track and log that information. All that data is available and, and could theoretically be uploaded to the home company, the mothership, uh, anytime they want. Right. Um, so sh what should I do now? Uh, how should I protect myself? What should I be worried about? Well, the first thing I think that's important is when you get a PVR, make sure you pay t attention to the privacy policy. Right. Find out what the preferences are. Generally speaking, most people will give you some options, as right. I explained. TiVo's uh, default setting is that they collect non-identifiable da non data about you. Uh, you can choose a more privacy protective option. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first thing to do. Make sure you're using whatever preference, whatever option best suits your needs. Use your power of the marketplace to vote for companies that give you the option to opt out and, and, and be careful not to buy products that could spy on you and don't give you the option to avoid that. Right. Right? And be very careful as well that uh, new laws and new policies out there don't create a world where you don't have choices. Well, uh, is there something like that going on? There is. We're seeing today the Motion Picture Association is lobbying in a number of states for new laws that would allow cable companies, satellite companies, even your ISP to control what you can hook up in your living room. So well, what, 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 control what, what, I, what, what, whether I hook up a TiVo or not? Absolutely. The laws say that if you hook up a device without the permission of your service provider, whether that's your ISP or your cable company, that could potentially make you a criminal. In my house? In your house. 
Who's put? What state is that in? I gotta go write my congressman. That's Absolutely. terrible. Well, if you want to know more about these laws, they've been called. Are these the super DMCA? Super DMCA laws, oh, exactly. Man. Named after the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, right. which is a federal law, right. these laws are called Super DMCA laws because they're even worse than yeah. the DMCA. We've talked is. about them somewhat before. In fact, uh, in Tennessee, we have viewers in there who were, were able to kind of stop that in its tracks right. by going, by testifying, by going to the hearing saying, stop, no, this is a bad idea. Citizens make a difference. In Texas, they stopped this thing cold. In Massachusetts, they succeeded. That's great. Right now, if you're in Florida, now is a good time to send a letter to your governor because one of these bills is on his desk and the only thing standing between you and this law in Florida is Jeb Bush's veto. So they actually passed it through the legislature they and it's did. now on the desk of the governor. Wow. And if we go to EFF.org, can we learn more about this? Do you have Absolutely. stuff on there? Absolutely. EFF.org, our website, put in the word Super DMCA in the search box. It'll take you to our resources page. Wow, Fred. A real eye-opener. I hadn't really thought about this. I mean, you know that they can collect this information. I, I just always kind of figure, well, they're probably not. But mm -hmm. they, and they probably aren't right now, but they could. They could. That's something to be aware of. The best thing to protect us is the ability to have the freedom to choose what we want to connect. Right. Right, absolutely. EFF.org is the place to go. Read about how you could be profiled, your TV viewing habits, what you buy, what you do, what you watch, plus what you could do about it at the screensavers.com. And I hope we're not tracking people who go through there. <laughs> Still to come, it's TiVo for your radio. With no tracking involved, I'll share with you the pros and cons of Pogo's new Radio Your Way. And up next, we're going to check in with our gamers and see if they're surviving Wolfenstein right after this helpful office tip from Sarah. In Outlook or Outlook Express, even though you delete something, you'd still like to keep a copy of the email sometimes, right? So to keep those attachments of Patrick and his kilt or your favorite email from mom's recipe of her meatloaf, click on more settings here in the email accounts area, advanced tab, then click leave a copy of the messages on your server. Click OK and you're in business. It's just that easy. More TSS coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Mark joins us on the phone from, Roh I just want to have a little calm moment, from Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Hello, Mark. How are you doing tonight, guys? Oh, we're doing great. Sure. How you doing? Pretty good. What's your hey. question for us? Uh, I'm currently using a 56K dial-up. <gasps> we're so sorry. Cable it... and DSL are going to be available here within a couple months. Oh, that's exciting. That's yeah, great. I was uh, wondering one the... which one I should choose and uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of each. Mr. Norton has something to say, I believe. Uh, one of them will be available in the next couple months because invariably one of them's going to slip. It's a staggered release. Yeah, the, the, the second the first question is, do you have cable service currently? Uh, satellite. You have satellite. So you'd have to get cable service before you get a cable modem. Or they may charge you an additional fee. They may either right. may, they either may, may blah, 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 they may want you to either be a subscriber to the cable service or they may want you to pay an additional fee right. over their cable internet access to make up for the fact that they're not selling That's something cable. to keep in mind. I have to say, you know, any broadband's going to be better than what you got right now, Mark. You World know that. Better. It's Huge. not only because it's faster, but just because it's always there. Mm -hmm. You don't have to you go boing, boing, boing every time you want to get online. You don't have to deal with that. That's nice. Yeah. Right. However, which one's better depends a lot on how it's implemented. Yes. So you can, there's no blanket. Cable's better than DSL or vice versa. Either one of them can be amazing. Either one of them can stink. As a general rule of thumb, if the cable provider keeps up with the, the number, basically if they offer enough service to, as, as they add more clients, you're going to get more throughput. You're going to get a, a. They tend to be faster. Tend to be faster. Yeah. Okay. I've had both. I had cable, moved, couldn't get cable, got DSL. I'm very happy with both. But in general, cable is faster, usually yeah. costs a little bit less. Yeah. So. But you just have to check with your friends, your family, right. see how it works. And you're your also going to have to see whether or not either one of them actually, you, you said it's going to be available in a couple months. Yeah. Hopefully at least one of them will be available in a couple months. I have friends have been getting postcards from the cable company for three years saying, in any day now, we're going to have cable service yeah. in your area. It's just, you know, it's, it's sometimes harder to do than it sounds. Yes. So, Mark, the main thing is get one of them. Absolutely, it's going to change your life. Thanks and for the call. We appreciate it. It's going to be so much better. Oh, oh yeah. 
Hey, let's check in with Joshua. The land party's going on. Castle Wolfenstein. We've got yes. We've got some a new player in there. Looks like uh, yes. Uh, who's that down there? Well, just in from Skywalker Ranch. Oh, actually, really? oh, is really? David Zimke from Lucas Arts. David, how's it going? Good. Now, do they let you play games that aren't LucasArts games uh, over there? Yeah, definitely. We always wanted to see what everyone else is playing. And we, of course, being part of the job, you have to play games to uh, work at a company like LucasArts. Yeah, I say that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah you I do. have to play games. It's you have my to job. Play games. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, are you at Axis or Allies in this? I'm actually Allies right now. Yeah, you came in and this was set up as a nod scene. You demanded uh, to be Allies or you wouldn't play. <laughs> yeah, I basically wanted to be Allies. I want to be the good guys at yes. some point. Don't blame them. So now medic. over at LucasArts, uh, what, are you, what are you currently working on? Right now, we're actually uh, just finishing up a game called RTX Red Rock. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, third-person action-adventure game for the PlayStation 2. Okay. And it's set in the future of uh, Mars, actually. Ooh. Basically, it's a pretty cool game because um, aliens have invaded Mars, the uh, Mars colony, and uh, you are play the, the action hero named Wheeler. He's um, an RTX agent. He's a radical tactics expert. Mm -hmm. He's basically a one-man warrior. Um, he's sent up to Mars to figure out why the aliens have evaded, and he basically, you know, turns the tide and kicks them all off the planet. Cool. When yeah. can we see that game? That game is coming out next week. Oh, next week. PlayStation 2, yeah. So we're almost there. Yep. Cool. We we'll let you get back to the game. Okay. So, Kevin, uh, what happened to this computer you got? Well, the machine was really hosed up. Actually, uh, Dan put uh, a Bonsai Buddy on there. Ah, yeah, and, and yeah. Dan, that happens. We told you, I no Bonsai Buddy. Bonsai Buddy, he installs it everywhere he goes. Oh, it's, it's kind of no. his thing. I, I don't know. You're not allowed oh. on these machines anymore, Dan. This one's working great, though. Oh. Cool. Yeah. Yoshi, how you doing? I'm good, you know, throwing some grenades, blowing some people up. Now, Yoshi, uh, we usually, he he varies between being super easy to kill and kind of easy to kill. <laughs> so, I, I think he's doing a little bit better today. So, if you go in there, you can probably kill him. <laughs> and then down here on the end, we have a surprise guest from NVIDIA. A surprise guest from NVIDIA, Cheryl Wong. Cheryl, thanks for coming in and playing. Now, you normally play Unreal. This isn't your game. Oh, actually, I started Wolfenstein. You did start Wolfenstein? Yes, I cool. did. Cool. Well, then you get back in there. Everybody, go try to kick her butt, and then we'll see how the high scores are going later in the show. Cool. And we got we to gotta thank Cheryl and all the guys at NVIDIA for making this happen. Uh, they're one of the big sponsors of the LAN party, and without them, there probably wouldn't be a LAN party every week. So thank you, Cheryl. We really appreciate it. Back Good to you job. guys. Go ahead. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. What are you going to miss if you tune out now? You're going to miss Sarah's blog report. Blogs that anyone in the whole wide world can edit. Ooh, that's a scary thought. And still to come, what happens when you cross your TiVo with a radio? We'll show you when the screensavers rolls on. Tank. Welcome back to the Screen Savers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. Coming up in this half hour, Sarah's going to show you a blog that gives you permission to edit it freely. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, or Not going to happen on my blog. Total anarchy. And why people are write. commercials louder than our shows? What? Wonder that? What? Our next caller is going to find out. Yes. But in the meantime, Leo. It's for, time for Leo's pick. Every week I, I like to pick something that I think is cool, that I'm excited about, that's new, that's different. Uh, this one kind of blew me away. It's something that people have yeah. asked us for for a long time a way to record radio shows. Now, if you go to the Sea Crane catalog, which is a wonderful catalog, they make right. these great radios, you can buy a Sanjian radio with a timer and you can record, it's a big old thing, you put it on your desk and that'll work. But so half the audience right now is going, recording radio. Recording radio, think right. about it. Well, now wait and a minute. the other half is going, yeah! yeah! <laughs> Isn't there a show you love, Car Talk with Click and Clack or something that, there's no radio show that you would listen to every week. Maybe the ball game. Maybe you commute and you I, always I miss the traffic the report. I admire it. It's kind of like a TiVo, but for your broadcast. That's exactly the idea. I There are shows that I don't, you know, I have a long commute. Mm -hmm. There's a radio show I love, Fresh Air. It's yeah. on NPR. Great interviews. Which you can't listen to. They air it uh, after I get home. Right. So what I do is I set this. This is something from a company called Pogo Products called Radio Your Way. And really it's just a little MP3 player. And it has 32 megs of built-in memory. It also, you can add a little SD card. I've got a 128 megabyte SD card in there as well for a little extra memory. Sure, it's an MP3 player. It apps, it's also a, a radio. It has an FM radio and an AM radio. And it can record either one of those. On well, the that's the key. That's what's different. It has a voice recorder built uh -huh. in, but it also has timer record for radio. So that means cool. that I can set up as I have. In fact, give me, the, give me that little cable we had here. Where did it go? I had a little... Did it drop on the floor? Yes, I'm, it did. I'm playing back. I recorded this this afternoon. I'm going to listen to it on the way home. This is the, the, the fresh air broadcast from today. Let me turn it up. And you can actually... 
personal uh, issue. I recorded on their side this today, and I'm listening back to it. Daily basis, I'm, I'm very well aware of that. So, but the good thing is, I don't have to be there to press the record button. Right. I set the time. Let me stop it, and I'll show you. I set the timer. This is cool. Now, this it, now there are a couple of downsides to this, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. One of them is that it's a 24-hour clock, so it's currently 16:38, whatever that That's means. 4:38 for right, those who are in the military. Pacific time. So, I, I you you can set. Uh, this is going to be program number three. All right, I'm going to press play. I'm having flashbacks to programming a VCR. Uh, it is just like that. I can do five days a week, one day, any individual day, or I can do seven days a week. Press play. I set the start time, start minute, end time, end minutes, and then it will record automatically onto the memory. It'll turn itself on, turn itself off. You could use it as an alarm clock. You could wake up at 7 in the morning every yeah. morning with your, with your radio show. Cool. And it has, uh, you can get about four hours of, you know, pretty good audio. Uh, I, I the didn't internal think it was memory. that bad at all. It sounded pretty good. It sounds good. fine. And for, for talk radio, for, it's fine. If you want really nice music, it's not going to No, be I wouldn't do it for music. Fun. But let's say, for instance, you get in the car, you always miss the first traffic report of the day. You know it's eight minutes after the hour. Set this to record it. You get in the car, you can listen to it. Traffic Skip on the eight. On the eight. Skip through the commercials. I just think this is something, an idea whose time has come. Right. Negatives. 149 bucks. It's a lot of it's money. It's too expensive. Other negative is the firmware is a little kind of funky. It kind of takes a while to get used to. It's like programming a VCR. It's a little right. complicated. The instructions are not written exactly in English. It's close. It's something like English. It's something English-like. I was able to figure Many it out. Many of the verbs and nouns are recognizable for <laughs> But English you might speakers. have a little difficulty. I think the next generation might be a better right. product. But right now, this is the this is like a little portable And you basically just you throw that in radio. your backpack. It records the FM exactly. signals. It even has, and I like this, a built-in speaker on it. So you don't even have to plug in the headphones. You can just, or, or uh, plug it into your car. You can actually just listen on the little speaker. One last question. Yes. Can you record regular MP3s onto it and play back regular MP3s? You can. It has a, a USB uh, connection that you mm -hmm. can connect to a USB software. Not the best software in the world, but it works. It's pretty good, right? With a, a very so nice relaxing. And, uh, I like nice talk radio. I'm sorry. That's just my flaw. RadioYourWay.com. If you're interested in it, it, if you're one of those people who has a radio show that you listen to on a regular basis, this is kind of a lifesaver. If you're not it might not be the product for you. Cool it's product, certainly not though. the best MP3 player ever. Pogo has other products like this that are FM only. This is the only one I know of that's AM and FM. Less money for FM only? Uh, no, it's the same price. Cool. Uh, and by the way, Robert Heron, one of our lab rats, did his own review. Apparently not as big a radio fan as I am. He has, yeah. but he talks about the negatives as well. You should read the review before you buy it on the screensavers. And if you want to, yeah, it, read it. Read, read it. Leo's. He, I would, I'd say I'm more positive about it than he was. But I agree with him that maybe the next generation will be the one. I don't know. I'm glad I have it, and I'm using it. Don't touch that dial. Coming up, is it crafty marketing? Or just annoying? <laughs> <laughs> Caller Mark wonders why our commercials are so loud. But coming up next... Sarah's got Wiki on the brain. If you want to find out what it is and why you can have it too, well, you know what? You're going to have to wait because right now she's going to give you a web tip. If you really want to know when you're moving from secure to insecure site, do this. Go to the Tools menu, Internet Options, Advanced tab, scroll all the way down, and make sure that if you want to know, this warn between checking between secure and unsecure mode is checked. That's all you gotta do. It's the coolest thing since sliced bread. Bye. Stay with us. Welcome back to the screen saver. Hey, how would you like to load up your house? Load it up with 100 large of the coolest tech products around. Sure. Yes. Who wouldn't? Well, next week we're going to do it. Thanks to Circuit City, Tech TV's Digital Dig Sweepstakes will give you a chance. In addition to the grand prize, a makeover for your home, you'll also get a chance to win daily prizes like your own TiVo. I know you want one. A portable DVD player. But you do have to watch us in order to enter, so go to techtv.com to find out all the details. There's always a hitch. There's always a catch. you got to watch Tech TV. I'm sorry. But wait a minute. You're doing it right now anyway, aren't you? And there's nothing to win. So there. <laughs> Let's check in with the fine folks. Over at Tech Live. See what's coming up tonight. Chris Leary yes, joins sir. us. Hey, not only is the uh, internet on computers these days, but it seems you can uh, pr pretty much just about order anything you want. Wait that minute, includes wait what? They got the internet on computers now? These days, absolutely. Whoa. And you can order anything you want, including this guy right here. He ordered a bunch of stuff that I guess you can build your own missile, your cruise missile. Cool. And no questions asked. Now, that's kind of creepy, huh? 
Well, we're going to have the story on the Tech Live tonight. It's going to be pretty cool. So, yeah, back to you guys. I want to see this guy. He is, awesome. he is getting a lot of heat for this. He's building a cruise missile in his backyard. That like, sounds so cool. You've never wanted to annihilate a neighbor. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm targeting it right now. Hey, thank you, Chris. That's what's coming up on Tech Live right after the show now. Let's check in with our blog mistress. The Sarah Pat Lane. Benatar of Tech TV. These boots were made for <laughs> yeah, you're very Nancy Sinatra today. Thanks. <laughs> no, that's good. Ugh. That's a good thing. Okay. All right. Moving right along. A lot of folks with blogs give editing privileges to others to clean out comments area and things like that. Something that I should be doing. Yes. 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 But what if you gave editing privileges to the entries themselves to everyone in the whole world? Whoa. That's you, a little chaotic, yeah, right? Yeah, no kidding. But that's exactly what's going on with something called Wiki, or Wiki, or Viki, or Viki. I'm not sure how it's pronounced yet. It, <laughs> no one knows. We, we don't really know. No one knows. In Hawaii, it would be Viki. I know, I know someone has a dog named Viki. Viki. Anyway, um, I'm looking at a page put together uh, by basically a bunch of people, if you want to take a look at it. And I have total editing rights over this. This is a monkeypox story. It's a news article. Um, the type of setup is called Wiki. What it does is refers to a piece of server software that allows users to create, edit, delete anything on this page from any browser, which is kind of interesting. Now, just to show you what I can do, I'm going to go down to the bottom left-hand corner and say, edit this page. This is a legitimate uh, story on uh, monkeypox, where it originated, and you know, what's going on with it. And, and I'm now just going to say it. something you're like, ruin it. Sarah Lane is totally cool <laughs> and does not have monkey pox. <laughs> you've ruined which it. Which is really dumb, and I'm really not helping, but I just want to prove that I could say this. I'm going to save the page. Now, if any pe anybody in the whole world goes to wikipedia.org and looks up the monkey pox article, that's what it's going to say. <laughs> Basically, you know, that's not what the point is. The point is to have this absolutely collaborative effort right. between millions and millions of people. It makes some presumptions, though, on the responsibility of the collaborators. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried so far. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. This, this is my week's head scratcher blog. It's called She's a Flight Risk. And it's supposedly an autobiographical account of one woman on the run from an arranged marriage. Wow. And it's very intriguing, right down to some... PGP encoded entries? Mm. Yes. Now, basically, the big question I have is, is it fact or fiction? It's sort of like, you know, the new Baghdad blogger. I'm torn. I have no idea. I've read a lot. She's very intelligent, whoever she is. But I don't know if it's true or not. I want your input, so post your thoughts in my talkback section. Last but not least, let's take a look at Sarah's blog shares. Now, SarahLane.com is doing quite well. In fact, my net worth is $28,939.64. I'm just offering right now, I'll, I'll sell my blog to you. If you have $28,000, you can have You can have it. I'm done. Yeah. Um, but just for fun, let's look up Leoville. How much is my blog See worth? how you're doing. I'm at $28,000. let us remember that, yeah, people. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have a feeling we'll I'm not going to be doing as well. Why do Ooh, I think? $21,000. That burns. <laughs> how do people buy my blog or your blog? I don't understand. They just buy shares on that on that site. Yeah, well, it's sort of it's sort of like that whole Hollywood stock exchange. Thing. Oh yeah, right, sure. It's, it's fun. It's, it's funny fun. money. Yeah. yeah, Sarah beats Leo. Anyway, that wraps up my blubbering <laughs> until next Thursday. But before I go, last week I said I'd read my favorite hacker haiku posted in my talkback area. A lot of you people posted. Many people don't quite know what a haiku is, but Snaggy did. He wrote a nice one called the Leo effect. Oh. Leo buys new box. Then price comes falling down hard. New pewter announced. <laughs> is that really in haiku uh, uh, rhythm? Is five, that five, seven, five, 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 oh, that's It's good. just that easy. Until next time, go read a blog. I toss the virtual baton back to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Lady warrior. Wow. Still to come, our LAN party is going strong over there. We'll check the high scores in just a bit. And after the break, is Tech TV run by admin? Then why are our commercials so loud? Why are all commercials so loud? We're going to tell Mark all about that right after some loud commercials. Mark on the line from San Antone. Hello, Mark. Hi, Leo. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And hey, Pat. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. Good to hear it. I, what I can hear, except that I just got deafened by the commercials on the last run. Yeah, yeah. So you're the guy who thinks the commercials are louder on the channel than the, the programming. Well, I know it's always been that way. I mean... A lot of channels sound that way, too, though, don't they? Right, except yeah. uh, 
on uh, 354 on DirecTV. That's us. It's really loud. I don't. I think maybe you guys are broadcasting a little bit lower on on your well, volume than. In general, that this is a very common problem or right. question. It, this is not your imagination. It is. It does. Yeah. It, but it's apparently louder, not actually louder. And here's why. Um, and I know this because I used to work in AM radio. Audio comp when they compress an audio right. signal, what are they doing? Well, basically, they're they're they're, they're taking as much of the uh, the, dynamic, the extra bits out. The dynamic range is reduced. Right. So, uh, well, you know, in a symphony or a good example, symphony orchestra. There's some very quiet stuff, mm -hmm. and there's some very loud stuff. And when you listen to classical music, that's a good yeah. test of speakers because they have a broad dynamic range. Uh, TV show has the same kind of thing. Commercials tend to be compressed. That is, they raise the quietest stuff mm -hmm. and lower the loudest stuff so that the range is narrow, just like an AM radio. Now, to the ear, that is apparently louder. It's, in fact, not louder, the okay. same sound pressure, but because the loudest and the quietest are compressed. Does that make sense, Mark? It sounds louder. Just as AM radio sounds louder than FM, it's not. Okay. But it's highly compressed. So you're saying it's not the, 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 it's the not urban a myth is that they turn up the volume no. of the commercials. It's because commercials are always compressed and our broadcast is not. Hmm. Okay, Mark? I hope that helps. And I don't think we're doing it, but I'm running right upstairs to Master Control to make sure. <laughs> There's still more TSS to come. Find out who scored the highest in our land party and we'll dive into the emails right after this. gotta catch tomorrow's show. If you thought today was great, wait till you see tomorrow. Our dark tipper Kevin Rose shows you five ways to keep your PC secure. And you know he knows. And protect yourself in the outdoors this summer. Cool gadget ideas from Dick D. Bartolo, our giz whiz. Plus some great tips on how to create and maintain your web blogs with one of the, one of the greats in the blogging community. It's all on tomorrow's television program. High scores right here from each yep. round of our land party. Powered by NVIDIA. Congratulations to all our players. Anybody from the Tech TV crowd on there? No. No. Nobody on Tech TV no, got you top. like a whale from Brenton. <laughs> no, no. He's usually in there, so he's, yeah, you know. He's usually wiping everybody up off the floor. Hey, thanks to David Zemke with yeah. LucasArts for coming by. Remember, RTX Red Rock comes out for the uh, PlayStation 2 next week. Mm -hmm. And you'll finally get some sleep, won't you? That's, that's, boy, when you get that close to shipping, you know it's exhausting. Good luck to you. And he's out playing video Thanks, games. Yeah. He's a wild man. And if you didn't get to play this week, well, you got to register. Next week, what are we going to play, Joshua? We're going to do it again? Castle Wolfenstein? Uh, I don't know. Castle we Wolfenstein or Unreal? It'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise game. So register and you can be part of the party. Now, what do you got there? Okay, we got uh, Roman Leo found a couple examples of refrigerating. Oh, well. We this is a computer in a refrigerator. Computer in a refrigerator. I think we can make something a little prettier than that. I also noticed it didn't leave much room for Coca-Cola or Dr. Pepper. Okay, our goal is a six-pack of Dr. Pepper and a ham sandwich. I like it. Plus the motherboard. We and also found it that uh, as people have done testing and uh, why do we think advertisements are louder our experts think it be attributed to a technique called compression compression is when noise levels are pushed to the maximum within a certain decibel range it's not the same thing as as like mp3 compression right. it's a uh, audio range compression right. basically yeah so compression is when noise levels are pushed to the maximum within a certain decibel range this gives the sound a greater impact without substantially altering the noise level and i asked that was from a current affair who did a study in 2000 and i asked Rayvon, our sound guy and he yeah. said that's it it's everything's at zero level on if you look at the uh, the meters on the board, uh -huh. but be, but stuff that's compressed sounds apparently sounds louder, just like yeah. an AM radio. It punches out at you. So we're very sorry. We're sorry about the commercials. You know what we could do? We could fix it. We could shout, and then the commercials won't sound so loud. They'll sound quieter. That's it for this edition of the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to our guest Fred Von Lohman. Y'all have a great night. Bye.